Why is Odell a Brown still? I think he's got like, what, eight hours from this exact moment to get traded or something. When this video comes out, I think the deadline will actually be over. And if he's still a Brown, I'm going to be very disappointed. He is supposed to be a Colt right now. Or a Packer, that would be a nightmare. But I mean, just get him out of Cleveland. I don't know what it is, man. It's something with the chemistry between him and Baker. It just doesn't work there. But I don't think for one second that his career is done. But if he stays in Cleveland, no matter what, like, it's just not going to work. If it hasn't worked in two years, why is it going to start working now? Even if it's a receiver for receiver trade, like sending him to Chicago and sending Allen Robinson to Cleveland, even though I think Odell in Chicago would be brutal, it could be something of that nature. But seriously, Odell, go, like, get out of Cleveland. I'm rooting for you, by the way, but get out. All right, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today is a special day. I don't know if you guys are aware. Well, there's literally no way you guys would ever be aware of this. But today is going to be the official Wyatt's World Half Season Awards. I've got a list of, I think, like eight, eight to ten awards here that I'm going to be giving out to players who I think obviously deserve them the most. So we are going to be going through the MVP, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, Worst Team, best team most improved player and the player who fell the most sound good i think it does before we hop into those 10 awards though head over to gfield.com i'm sorry i'm drinking coffee this morning but head over to gfield.com use code wyatt's world save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products all right, so I'm not sure if I should start or end with the MVP. Because our options are to start with the MVP and end with the biggest fall, or start with the biggest fall and end with the MVP. And I think textbook people would end with the MVP. And we're not textbook, so we're going to do it reverse. So currently in the league right now through eight weeks, my MVP would be Derrick Henry. However, he just got hurt possibly for the rest of the year, so we know he's not going to win it, which is extremely unfortunate. And he is the only player on this list that I'm doing this for because... I mean, it's a freak thing, and I don't mean to be biased, but my runner-up is Josh Allen. I'll put a graphic on the screen of him and Aaron Rodgers' numbers. He's literally going toe-to-toe -to -toe with A-Rod right now, and he's the defending champion from last year. Kyler Murray, Stafford, all those guys are definitely in the picture, but how Josh has developed as a player from the guy who was drafted to the guy he is now, where he's leading that team and that franchise, I think he definitely has earned an MVP trophy. But he's got to finish out the year yet. I'm just saying this through eight weeks. Moving on, we got the Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think this one is pretty clear-cut obvious, but uh, Jamar Chase. He's got this thing locked down, dude. Now, Najee is having a great rookie campaign, and there are other rookies who are doing well, but Jamar Chase is doing better than majority of the actual entirety of the fucking league. 780 receiving yards and 7 touchdowns through 8 weeks of your rookie season? You've earned it, man. You've earned it. All right, and that brings us to the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Another one that I think is clear-cut obvious, and that is Micah Parsons. For the young rookie that he is, his ability to take control of a game and take leadership of his defense is absolutely insane. I know he only has like two and a half, three sacks on the year, but it's his ability to bring pressure from anywhere they put him in that scheme that makes him so good. Sit back as a linebacker, throw him on the edge. Shit, he's probably fast enough to play safety. He can do everything. I got to watch him destroy the Vikings. He's basically the reason that they won that game on Sunday. He's an animal and he's made a huge difference in the defense. Micah Parsons by a mile for me. And transitioning back, we will go to the Offensive Player of the Year. Now, this could be a number of people, honestly. This is basically like a junior MVP award. And I'm sure that there's a bunch of names out there that are going to get thrown in the comments and they're all going to make sense. But I'm going to go ahead and do it, man. My Offensive Player of the Year right now is Cooper Cup. 924 yards and 10 touchdowns? Are you fucking insane? He's on pace to break like every receiving record ever right now. Unfortunately, he probably will. And the only reason I say unfortunate is because it's a 17 game season. So it's not going to really count towards the past. But even if this was a 16 game season, I think he'd still be hanging in there with the boys right now. Cooper Cup has been nothing but elite this year. Nothing but elite. If I gave it to any other player, I'd have to slap myself in the face. Flipping back, we got the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. For me, it's easy, Miles Garrett. Ten and a half sacks through eight weeks. 
I think the next closest guy is TJ with eight and a half. But I just think Miles deserves it, man. And I think a lot of the reason that some people might not look at it is because of the incident that happened with him a couple years ago. If you hate him because of that, I understand, but you gotta appreciate what he's doing right now. Not only does it take an entire offensive line to stop him, but what's sickening is that half the time it still doesn't work. Man is so big, he's way too fast for how big he is. Like, it should not be physically possible. Browns are four and four. They probably would not have two of those wins without Miles Garrett. I'll tell you right now, they wouldn't have beat Minnesota without him. I'm giving it to him. Defensive player of the year is Miles Garrett as of right now. All right, up next, we got the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Now, this could be a number of people, too. It could be Derwin, it could be Joe Burrow, <laughs> Jameis, rest in peace, to his season. Torres ACL, I'm actually upset about that. Anyway, uh, no, but none of those guys even compare to one person, and it's obvious, painfully obvious, Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not going to talk about Week 8 because he didn't play, but he has led Dallas to the top of the NFC East by a long shot. He's basically locked it down for him at this point. He got them to a 5 in one start. He has completed 73% of his passes while throwing for 1,813 yards, 16 touchdowns, and four interceptions while carrying a QBR of 115. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous. I ain't gonna shit you. Like, he's not out of the MVP conversation either. I'm being real right there. I don't think he's on Josh and Aaron. Like, he's not white there, but he is coming right behind him. He's playing excellent, excellent football. I'm not saying he can't get up to their level. He probably fucking will. But missing a week hurts him in that race. It really does. But as a comeback player of the year, <laughs> not fucking close. Not close at all. All right, up next, we got two team awards and then the last two player awards. I don't know why I set it up like this, but it's the best overall team, best roster, basically. That Von Miller trade really fucked this up because I had Buffalo, but I don't know now. I'm going to roll with Buffalo still just because of how good their secondary, how good their defense has been playing, how good Josh has been playing. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. Both the safeties, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, three picks apiece. Tredavious White, now he's not necessarily the playmaker who's going to get you interceptions, but he is the only player in the NFL right now who is not allowed a touchdown. Lock the fuck down. I don't give a shit if he's catching balls or not. They're not scoring, I'm happy. You got the linebacker tandem of Milano and Edmonds. What a leader Tremaine has turned into. It's been magnificent. The D-line bringing pressure from everywhere. Then we got the offense, which I talk about in every single video with the brilliant head coach, the brilliant coordinator. I could say good things about this team for fucking days. Best team and they got an MVP on their hands. I'm giving it to Buffalo. Rams are, are they're right there. They're right next to him, man. Now, moving on to the worst team. To me, I, I don't have to think about this. And it's not Detroit, believe it or not. It's fucking Houston. Dude, their team is shit. It's so bad. I love Tyrod. I'm happy he's back. But I mean, he's not like a stud quarterback. And other than Brandon Cooks, who is excellent, they got nobody, man. Maybe Philip Lindsay, but Jesus Christ. Jordan Aikens, Danny Amendola, Rex Burkhead. <laughs> they just got no power. They got no star power. They got no pop. Well, they do, but the one guy that they have isn't playing. Honestly, if none of this shit ever happened and Deshaun Watson was still there, Odell Beckham would tear it the fuck up in Houston. Rest in peace to one of the greatest tandems that could have ever happened. Worst team right now, Houston. Moving on, I guess these are kind of my own awards now, so are the last two, but this is the most improved player. Now, the difference between this is comeback player of the year, I count as injuries. Most improved is you just went from sucking shit to good. I'm giving it to Carson Wentz. Now, I know you can laugh about the horseshit game. Well, it wasn't really horseshit, but the horseshit interceptions he threw against the Titans. Even with that game, he's thrown 14 touchdowns and only three picks on the year. Now, I know the Colts aren't exactly where they want to be, and they're probably performing underneath a lot of people's expectations to a degree, but Carson Wentz just specifically analyzing the player that he ended last year on and the player he is right now and has been all year? Yeah, man, he's most improved for sure, at least if you're asking me. And now, finally, for the last award, it is the biggest fall of the year, whether it's for injury, whether it's for production purposes only, whatever it is, biggest fall. I hate to give this award to him. I like him a lot, but I mean, it's, it's pretty clear for me. <laughs> Allen Robinson, man, get him out of Chicago if you can. Eight weeks, he has 271 fucking yards in one touchdown. 26 total receptions, it's madness over there. Now, this isn't his fault. I know he's still good. He's just not getting the targets. But man, like from the player he was last year and the year before and that player he's been essentially since he entered the league, he's like useless right now. Oh, it sucks. I feel bad for him, Alan. It's nothing you did personally, but it's what your team is doing to you. Biggest fall goes to A-Rob. 
All right, guys, and that is going to be all for the Wyatt's World Mid-Season Awards. I hope you guys had fun with this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if there's anybody I snubbed or anybody you agree with. Also, if you enjoyed the video, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn the bell on. I do my best to post every single day. With all that stuff being said, guys, I'm going to hop off and edit this so you can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday, and as always, I will see you in the next video.